Buzz, what's good? I love your your view. It's you know single digits here. <laughs> so nice and warm here. Nice and warm here. No doubt about that. It's a beautiful day. I love it. I love it. I know, um, you know, I was just letting everybody know we're going to be jumping in with the Rapid Funnel team. We actually have a, a four-week challenge in the month of February utilizing the uh, the Honey Badger app. Um, and we're, we're going to really dive in, you know, really talking about the, the simple three-step agent attraction process and, and really getting into the, the identify, engage, and invite of, of what it is that, um, you know, really breaking it down to the fundamentals of, of the agent attraction side of things. And, you know, I think it, 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 that whole process can be broken down into, um, I mean, just, just really applies for anything, any type of relationship um, component. And it's either, you know, bring it to your team, bring it to agent attraction, or even, you know, kind of looking at this and, and from a buyer's and seller's standpoint, even. And so, you know, identify who the ICP, who the opportunity in the market, how do we engage with them? And then, you know, in, in this regard, I mean, are we invite, we can invite even thinking about buyers and sellers, what could you invite them to? Um, you can invite to an open house, you can invite to an appointment. So I think, you know, just understanding the principles of that process and how it applies in everything that, uh, that we're doing. Agreed. What um, I mean, I know, you know, I, I get to the to the inner workings with a, with a lot of agents and kind of what they're wrestling with immediately in their business. But, you know, for you, you have a, a unique opportunity talking to agents all over the all over the, the planet and, and kind of what they're wrestling with and, and maybe some mental barriers that they're facing. Um, and I, I had, man, one of one of the best expert mentor conversations um, with, uh, with, with Kaufman, I had Kaufman, I've been wrestling, trying to wrestle that cat down. Um, maybe we had maybe done 10 or 15 episodes and I was trying to get him, um, and, and Fred and they elusive, <laughs> like a slippery fish. So I had to go 200 more episodes before I could finally get Kaufman to get on and he gets on and man, he just, it was, and we stayed high level, right? And and we stayed on the mental side of things. And it was it was kind of just timing, right? I was looking through some some of uh, the Tony Robbins UPW stuff, and I saw that little thing that said, you know, eighty percent mental, twenty percent mechanics. And so Kevin and I talked about that, and he joked. He says it's probably ninety five five, right? Ninety five percent mental, five percent mechanics. Yet, you know us together over the last 18 years and, and, and really, you know, 15 plus years on the coaching and training side of things, agents want to go to the mechanics before they can even mentally get their head around it. And I, I mean, I would love for you to kind of expand on that just because you have so many conversations It always comes down to the mental, the mental constraints that a lot of people are having. And I think it's, you know, we, we can't talk about it enough for people to have that distinction and that breakthrough that's going to allow them to, you know, take that next step. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, every time, every time we, we have this conversation, we always come back to, you know, clarity and the goal. Um, mm. You know, it, 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 it always defaults back to what are we trying to do? What's the goal? And then reverse engineering the goal, um, you know, and, and, you know, the fundamentals may change, you know, the, the things that you might have to do may change, the markets may change, but, but but realistically, getting clear on the goal and then solving you know for whatever the the number one priority is that's keeping you in the way of hitting those goals is always the process that you have to go through. And um, you know if you're stuck, you know it, it it seems to me that most everybody that is stuck is just unclear. They're just unclear. There there there's a million ways to accomplish the goal um, in this business for sure. And so you know when when you get stuck, you have to go back to getting clear on where you're at, where you're trying to go and, and solving whatever that biggest rock is in your shoe. And if you don't know what that biggest rock in your shoe is, then, you know, you, you may be solving the wrong problems. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of always my default, you know, when it comes to mindset, you know, there's no question, you know, you, you could be doing more, you could be more efficient, you could be closing more deals, you could be attracting more agents, you could be doing more. So what's keeping you from doing more? Um, and, you know, and like you said, I think a lot of it is, is the mental game of understanding, you know, you, you could absolutely be doing significantly more than you're doing and then getting clear on what's the biggest obstacle you got to remove, um, in order for you to do that and, and, and look at what are all the ways to accomplish the goal. And that's where good mentorship comes in. 
uh, with people that, you know, that have solved this problem many different ways and that can help you find what's the best way, right, to move forward and, and solve that problem the fastest, the easiest, best return on investment, return on time, uh, easiest to execute um, and, and help, you know, help make sure you're doing the right steps in the right order. I mean, I think that's, you know, if, if you're lost or you're stuck, you, you, you might need a coach, you know, <laughs> that you might need a coach to help you get through it. Yeah, I, 100%. And I think that, you know, we learned, thank goodness, we learned that so early on, right, to be able to, you know, it was the, you know, we joked about it, had our own little, you know, around to it was the, who do I need to be set next to in class, right? And so I think that just kind of opened us up to, okay, who do we need to get around? Who do we need to be coaching with? Who do we need to be talking to, to create these conversations to help us to have these breakthroughs? And, and so <clears throat> you, were, you were talking there, and I just, I always kind of default when we talk agent attraction or increasing headcount. And I was like, one of the things that I was like, man, I wish we would have put more effort on that, like in the lot market to be able to, you know, how, if we, I mean, just imagine, cause if we cracked any code in a lot and we can crack any code anywhere on the planet. Right. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of like, man, what would we have done differently? And I think where I always kind of come back to is that, man, we just didn't have enough strategies. We just didn't have enough engagement. We didn't have enough outbound. Um, and, and really pushing people to two things like this process, like what we're talking about. Right. I think we, we, we would identify, we just maybe weren't persistent enough. Maybe we weren't engaging enough. Maybe we didn't invite enough. Maybe we didn't have enough places for them to go. And so as, as we kind of talk through and, and work with some of the best agents on the planet and seeing all of their multiple strategies, and I think that's where what you're talking about is like, man, just asking better questions. Hey, what are you, what are you doing? What's working? What, 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 you know, just continuing to dive deep, but it still, I think revolves around those three key principles. Um, but even, even with, with Sean, when Sean was on with us um, a couple of weeks ago, just even that strategy of being, being in the hallway, right. Being in, being, being at the event, um, you know, like Jesse Itzler always says, he's like, just get in the room. Even if you buy the nosebleed ticket, get in the room. And I, I know you're a huge proponent of that. I mean, you you embody it. You've lived it your entire life. You're always in the room. And I think for everybody listening in, you know, one of your strategies has to be getting in the room where where your people are. No doubt about that. The, the problems you have have been solved before by people that have came before you. Get next to them. And uh, that is the that has always been the shortcut to success. There's no reason to make it hard. <laughs> <laughs> That is, I, went to, uh, I went to Inman, New York, and I met a guy in the hallway. His name's Dana. You'll meet him soon. His 2,500 agents are joining EXP. Wow. It's the, first, it's the first time I ever met Dana. Met another person from Compass who uh, is at the end of their contract, but, you know, they, they, still, they still owe, but not as much. So I got to sit down with him in their EXP hospitality suite. He didn't even know who I was. And I showed him how he would make that money back in his first year and he wouldn't continue to come in debt. And I just went, God, why are there not so many people here? It was crazy. And the EXP had the largest contingent at Inman. We had we had over 150 people there. Wow. Yeah. So it's I just love that. It's I go to NAR and people go, why do you go to NAR? I go, I'll patrol the streets of San Diego. I can spot a Remax owner a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love it. Albie, what's good? Hey, happy uh, Taco Tuesday, everybody. Taco yeah. Tuesday. Yes, it is sir. Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> this Tuesday. Uh, cool. Well, you guys, you know, this is an uh, opportunity to jump in, a little Q&A. Any questions you guys have? Uh, it's great. Sean's back on with us. We've got Al, Jay, myself. Any questions that you guys have, um, anywhere that you're stuck, anything that you need help with, feel free, take advantage of this uh, this time and uh, either throw it in the chat or unmute. We'd love to, to help you guys. Hey, Sean, this is Anand. When you say Compass contract, is it applicable to the individual solo agent also? And how big is that? Yes, Compass has, well, it varies because contracts, they can tell how big a sucker you are walking in. So. A typical Compass contract uh, consists of four things. Your sign-on bonus, your marketing allowance, your electronic incentive, and stock awards. 
or RSUs, the restricted stock units. So if you leave, it says on paragraph seven of their initial contract that anything other than the, the commission negotiated on this contract will be considered an incentive. Well, that means if you walked into the manager on your second year and say, you know, I've been a good agent, can I be a 90, 85, 15 split because it says 80 20 on my contract they go oh yeah sure you're an 85 15 that means every time you close a transaction you've taken an incentive if you say I, i'd like a marketing allowance their marketing allowances are insidious they break them up over four quarters so when you accept it in january of 2022 they break it up over four quarters so that your last payment is january of 2023 and it says right there that on paragraph seven, that you, if you leave within two years of accepting any incentives, any incentives, free office, VA, free marketing material, marketing allowance, any incentives, you have to pay back everything they ever gave to you. Mm. It's even worse. If I gave Jay Kinder some stock in 2022 that was valued at $19, and I'm going to leave him or he's going to leave me in 2023 and he's going to pay it back. And now it's worth $4. He has to pay it back at what he got it at, the $19, even though wow. it's only worth $4 today. Wow. So it's, yeah, it, it's golden handcuffs. And Robert Refkin and, and, the, and their head of, uh, and their chief operating officer, tried to say it's not golden handcuffs, that we're all grownups and we make our decisions. But they said, but you won't, you won't let them go. I mean, you won't, and he goes, no, we gave them money. They're gonna stay. They're gonna stay until they've completed their obligation. When Compass negotiates a contract, they look at your average, they look at your average volume and units and determine how long it will take you to pay it back. And that's how long they obligate you for. And he said, people still join Compass uh, even without incentives. He said, we got a thousand agents in Q4. What they didn't tell you is they lost 9,600 agents. Mm -hmm. So that the writings on the wall, uh, Mike Del Prete from Inman said is the worst real estate model in the history of real estate. Really? The problem is you got to help your friends. You got to point it out to them because you can't get around it and say, there's a commitment department at Compass that is going to contact you when you leave. It doesn't matter what your manager says, doesn't matter what your friend says, doesn't matter what your contract says, the commitment department is going to send you a bill. So and you're they, saying, yeah. sorry, if you don't leave after two years, what happens? You don't if you don't take anything from them, I come in and they give me a whole bunch of stuff and I take it all up front and I wait completely two years and I don't accept anything then I can walk out of there and not pay it back. And, and it may not be two years. Some people are savvy. It may be one year. You, it actually says there's a blank line with a, with a little parentheses around an S. So a year or years. Um, but read the Compass contract. They also have another document called, and this is weird because I was in the military. Anybody else in the military? So it's called the Terms of Engagement. That is, that is their supplemental document, which is really a military term for when are you allowed to fire on the other side? So the terms of engagement, they have the terms of engagement and their independent contractor agreement. Read them both. It's only two pages. And in paragraph four, section seven, it actually says how long you're obligated to them after taking money. Be aware your stocks don't even your stocks don't even mature for two years. So if you leave before two years, you don't even get your stocks. Okay, so if they leave after that obligation period, they don't have to pay anything. Yes, but be very careful. Uh, like I said, last year in June of last year, Compass run, ran a cool contest. If you listed a home in June and sold it before October, they would give you a 1% commission bonus on that house bonus so for one percent of commission they're going to obligate you for two more years the okay. manager is required to walk around within 90 days before you leave and offer you 
a free vir you want a free virtual assistant you want five thousand dollars of free marketing or do you even want your I, I you know john you've been doing a great job mr kitchens i'd like to give you a free office for the rest of the year boom they got you they're really good it's a car salesman so they're like trying to sell sell you that under under car sealer or upgrade your recaro seats so <laughs> Yeah, you you've got to really you got to really pay attention to it. I I have a five time Olympic gold medalist who's stuck. I had a guy in California. If you want to talk to him, I think he's in in Jay's downline somewhere. His name's Ken Pecus, P E C U S. Ken wrote a four hundred and nineteen thousand dollar check to Compass in the middle of twenty twenty two to walk away because we showed him how he would save money over the two years he was still obligated to Compass, he'd make more money being here at EXP. Just uh, because- Do you think an individual agent may make more money? Ken Pecos may be a team, correct? He may be joined J yes. with the team. An individual agent, depending on how much money they took. You know, if I was gonna get a John Kitchens, I don't think I could make up the difference. They probably would have to give John a half a million dollars. He may be stuck. That's why Compass still has, you know, 18,000 agents. There's people that are stuck. They're not stupid. They just, at that point in history, they're like, I'm going to take the free money. This looks good. I love this marketing material. Yeah, I'll they called six. me. Actually, the yeah. protection is they called me and I know a little bit math. So, but I am attracting a co-op agent. She does 46 transactions per year, but I don't know about contract of what she signed but she's showing some interest yeah, but i have tons of compass contracts say just redact her name and send it on over so you can look at it and you can the biggest question is when's the last time you took anything from the office for free anything and then you just look you're looking down in paragraph four seeing how long they're obligated after they did that oh okay and you can always send it to me i love collecting other companies icas and terms of engagement i thought that was great terms of engagement i'm like what is this a missile strike what's going to happen here? <laughs> okay sure yeah thanks thanks Sean. good stuff I, they all want out they're all coming albie will tell you this they're all coming people we thought were never coming anywhere mark demas carrie shoal i mean people who do billions of dollars in real estate People who are dyed in the red, dyed in the blue, or dyed independent, they're all coming. I, I can't, every time I talk to it, it's, although I don't hear, I, I don't like it. I only hear, I got to wind up some stuff. I got to yeah. take care of some stuff first. And they're kicking themselves in the head. They didn't come here in 2018, you know. Mm -hmm. Is there somewhere that we can uh, maybe get a copy of that contract so we could study it ourselves? Take a look at yes, that. Yes, there, there is a way. I'm going to have to make sure all these people's names are off of it. And, and be aware, they, just like other real estate companies, they change their rules daily. You know, Compass, Compass used to offer a whole bunch of stuff that they don't offer anymore. And they removed the manager and they did away with their VAs. And so everything changes, but you can look at what I got. I have stuff that was signed two years ago they may have a new thing their terms of engagement because they're a publicly traded company are required to be online you can look up compasses terms of engagement to see what some of the the details are on that when you wake them up all the people i've talked from talked to from compass they're unaware of it remember your ica is not a it's not a marriage certificate it's a divorce decree and you don't look at it until things have gone horrifyingly bad and you're trying to separate assets. That's the first time you look at, at, at a contract is when it's gone wrong. I mean, when you're getting in business and Jay and I are shaking hands, this is gonna be great, we're gonna make millions. No, first time you ever look at that contract is when you're on the way out the door. So, and that's with everybody, franchise agreements across the board are getting more and more difficult. Keller Williams, HomeSmart, Windermere, Windermere, not so much. Windermere did away with uh, terms on their contract. Uh, six month written notice, Jay. That's what they wanted, Windermere. Yeah. Uh, uh, Weikert was also one of the worst. Yeah. Walk away yeah, they, with zero. <laughs> zero on anything under contract. That's it. 
Mm. So they, they take it. That's one that they're dealing with right now is, uh, I think even KW is 50, 50 in your, in, in escrow transactions. They're changing the terms of the, the split when you leave and it's in the contract that you didn't read. I have a question. Um, and this is probably an obvious one, but obviously you don't want to talk negatively uh, to an agent about their contract or the potential contract. How do you start that conversation? Um, you know, in terms of, of maybe making them aware of some of those things that they're not aware of so that you can have a conversation about, you know, bringing them over. How do you start that? I've been starting it off by saying, uh, you know, the real estate, the real estate landscapes changed so dramatically in the last couple of years. When does paragraph four of your ICA say you're eligible to even explore your options? Because I'd love to present an option to you that will make you more, more money for you, your family and your business. But, you know, I don't want to interfere with your contract. And what I understand is your company's pretty strict on that contract. So you put it on them, they go home and read and go, what? It's self-awareness. You're not going to tell them what it says. They're going to finally read it and go, uh, some guys will go, nah, I'm, and the word, they'll use this word every time. I'm stuck until 2025. I'm stuck. And if I told you, Hector, if I told you you couldn't have bread anymore, it's the only thing you dream about. You'd, you'd salivate every time you thought about it. It'd be bread. I told Jay, Jay, you, you can't come here. Sorry, you can't. He loves that word because just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get some attorneys. I'm going to get a couple of people in a think tank. And I'm going to get my way out of this. So it's it's reverse psychology. I mean, I, I don't eat bread every day, but if you say I can't have it, I'll like sneak out of the house to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Jay has a T-shirt that says says something like that. <laughs> I think it says, say I won't. Say I won't. <laughs> He's gonna say, need I, a new, say I can't. Yeah. That's brilliant. I'm going to write that one down. Yeah. It's a great motivator too. When you say, you know what, uh, I don't want to interfere with your contract. We're all in this real estate game together. So, I mean, if you can read your ICA and tell me what paragraph four says about how long you're obligated to stay there, I would love, even if you, and I go, this is great because I know every manager is required to do this. I would love to give you the intel about our company, even if you just take it back to Compass to improve your office. And that's how they got me. Dan Beer sat down and he goes, I'll, I'll tell you everything you want to know about our company, even if you just use it as intel against us to recruit. And then I heard it and I just went, oh, dang, this is bad. From then on out, I couldn't even broach the subject of economics and finances to a real estate agent. And this lady walks up to me and goes, so is this the best place for me and my team financially? And I was like, oh, it was such a good question until she said financially. I was like, well, eventually I'll get you up to a point where you'll offset my $32,500 cap against your $16,000 cap over EXP. So you self-awareness is the best. Make, make them your biggest advocate. You don't even have to sell EXP when they find out that that Robert Refkin nailed their, you know, nailed their shorts to a chair. They, they'll do it themselves. Stuff. Good stuff. Cool. Any other questions? Thoughts? All right. Well, see you guys. Then.